Today's video is all about touching women, and this topic can actually be quite controversial because touching women is essential, but it can also be dangerous. And so in this video, I'm gonna tell you all the things that you know your father never told you about touching women. This isn't a topic that you can afford to not know about. Touching women is absolutely essential. If you do it right, there's going to be heaps of rewards, but if you don't do it or if you do it wrong, there can be massive negative consequences. Let's take this back to the start because some people are unaware of just how essential touch actually is for human beings. We need physical contact with other people in order to survive. And I'm not saying that metaphorically. Babies who are not held, cuddled or touched will stop growing. And if it goes on long enough, they'll actually die. That's even if their needs for clothing and warmth and food are all taken care of. Touch really is that important, which is why a lot of hospitals now are running volunteer programs where people, mostly old ladies, can come into the hospital for a couple of hours and, you know, cuddle the premature babies, give them a few hours of skin to skin contact because it's that essential. As a baby human, your neurological development actually depends on you being touched by other humans because it's human touch that creates the pathways in your brain for oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin. And even as an adult, being touched is what releases those pleasure chemicals and allows you know, you to release uh, stress and anxiety. You know this feeling when you're a child, when you are really upset, you regulate your emotions by being held, by being touched by an adult. When you are really sad or really angry, sometimes as a child, you didn't need to talk about your emotions. You didn't want to get all intellectual and cognitive or, and verbal about it. You just needed to be held, cuddled, stroked. And that's what was going to calm you down. Now that is not some random coincidence. Evolution has specifically wired you to be that way. Human beings are social animals. Our biology, our neurology are specifically wired for interactions with others. Human touch comforting us, that's actually part of our programming. That's why it is so damaging and traumatic for a human child to never be held or touched by another human. Like, have you ever seen that footage of the orphans in Romania that were never held as babies? It's absolutely heartbreaking footage. You see, you see them just sort of rocking back and forth, trying to imitate the, the feeling of being rocked by an adult, you know, holding themselves. I just, it's really tough footage to, to watch. If you want to get depressed after you watch this video, type Romanian orphanage into YouTube and, you know, <laughs> get ready to feel really sad. But the reason they're like that is because they have been deprived of something that's absolutely essential for their development as a human being. They needed to be touched. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably thinking about the last time you were cuddled, last time you were held and stroked, like how much human touch you have every single week. And if you're being honest with yourself, you're probably wishing that you had a little bit more. And while in this video, I'm going to be more specifically talking about touching women, please don't misunderstand me. Men have their own needs for touch, absolutely. Even on an unconscious level, I think a lot of parents who aim to do the right thing, they don't hold and cuddle their, their sons, like the little boys in their family, as often as they cuddle the little girls. I don't know, there's just a, a, a weird sort of stigma around that. We don't want to feel like we're cuddling boys too much, but it can mean that they're just not touched as much as they need to be. And it's often not until boys become fathers and they have children of their own and they can sort of cuddle and snuggle with their children that they actually get their, their needs for human touch genuinely satisfied. I've actually heard it suggested that one of the reasons why a lot of men might uh, participate in contact sports and martial arts is because of the, the need for human touch, but it's in a socially approved sort of masculine context. Maybe that sounds a little bit too outlandish for you. You can't imagine, you know, tough athlete masculine guys tackling each other because they secretly just want to touch other human beings. Maybe that's too far for you, but perhaps you can relate to the idea that the human desire for touch is behind a lot of the male drive actually towards sexuality. Have you ever had that experience of trying to get your needs for human touch met through a sexual context? Because if you have, that is a really good jumping off point because you probably have that in common with lots of women. That's what I do in this channel. I'm always trying to get men to understand things from the women's perspective. And so when I find a point of commonality that you know you and women are actually having a similar experience, I always capitalize on that. So imagine a woman who grows up in a household where her parents are very cold, very strict, very distant. They don't touch her. They don't cuddle her very much. She doesn't receive a lot of physical affection. And she grows up with a kind of 
body loneliness. You know, her body, her biology, her cells are just aching out to be touched. By the time she reaches puberty, she's just starved for touch. Her body is just aching to be held. But at that point, when her body starts to grow and develop, she notices a change from her peers. The boys around her start wanting to touch her because she is now sexually appealing. Now, deep down, she's probably not craving an actual sexual experience. She just wants to be held and cuddled in the way that, you know, her strict father never could give her. But she rationalizes in her mind that if boys are interested in touching her in a sexual way, sure, she can give them that. And then maybe afterwards, there can just be some intimate touching and some cuddling. You know, I'll give him what he wants. And then maybe afterwards, I'll get what I want. That's actually how a lot of young women end up becoming promiscuous early. And I would bet that there's probably guys listening to this right now who can really relate to that. You know, like you love the idea of spending the night, you know, sleeping with a girl, being in bed with her, falling asleep with her in your arms, cuddling, stroking each other. You just want an experience of touch. But in the back of your mind, you think that it's not masculine to be able to ask a woman for that. You think that there's a sort of pressure that you should make it sexual. You know, that's the only kind of touch that it's appropriate for a man to want and to give is, is sexual touch. It's really sad that we have so simplified the human need for touch to be about sex. And I welcome any movement that starts to destigmatize non-sexual, you know, touching. Have you ever heard of this, like cuddling hookers? This is a real thing. You can look this up on YouTube after you're done with the Romanian orphan orphanages. Um, but there are these brothels that exist with women who never sleep with you. They just wear pajamas and you pay for an hour and they just cuddle you. There's even people who organize like cuddle parties. I know somebody, uh, not well, but I'm aware of her and she organizes these like once a month and a bunch of people get together in really cuddly, snuggly clothes and they just, I don't know, I guess they just cuddle. I remember I watched a documentary on this. Cuddle parties, cuddling hookers, these are real things. And in my mind, it's just reinforcing the fact that human beings want to be touched and it doesn't always need to be sexual. In fact, it shouldn't be. And so knowing that, knowing that women want to be touched, that they crave, you know, human touch, I would encourage you to start to become comfortable touching women and also being touched. And I'm not talking about strangers or like your female boss at work. I mean, you've got to be discriminatory about when you are touching women. I mean, in context appropriate situations, like when you're on a date, start to think about ways that you can touch your date in ways that aren't sexual. Like make it a rule that every time you cross the street, you just take her by the hand. Or if you get into an argument with her, some silly disagreement, try and settle it with a thumb war, you know, just holding hands like that. Or if you're leading her somewhere, or if you're pointing to something in the distance, while you're doing that, just put your hand on the small of her back. Obviously don't be a creep, you know, you take your cues from her. You only do this if she's comfortable. But so long as you're socially calibrated and you're touching her in appropriate situations, you'll probably find that it's really, really welcome to her. It actually makes her feel safe in your presence. Now, thus far, I've presented this as though there's really only positives. There's only an upside. All women want to be touched, but that's, that's not true. Sometimes a woman does not want to be touched by you. And if you find that you're reaching for her hand and she recoils, it probably means one of three things. Firstly, it could mean that any touch from you is inherently going to be sexual. And that's probably because of your previous actions or if you've only just started dating her because of other guys that she's been in relationships with. In that case, what you wanna do is break that neurological circuitry and get her to establish um, an expectation of being touched that isn't automatically going to become sexual. You need to go gently, you know, go very slowly and start to rebuild uh, trust and comfort with her and show her that you're capable of touching her and stroking her and being physically intimate with her without always trying to undress her as well. Now, if she doesn't want to be touched, it could also mean that you're dealing with a woman who is emotionally fragile and being touched with uh, kindness and tenderness is just overwhelming to her. It's really sad to say this, but women who grew up in abusive households often don't actually believe that they deserve kindness. That scares them. And so being touched, that's too intimate. It sort of overwhelms them, especially if they've been working really hard to keep all of their emotions of pain buried. What they're worried about is that if you hold them and stroke them and touch them with love and care and kindness, then the floodgates are just going to open and all of their emotions are going to come bursting forth and they're not going to have any control. Maybe you can even relate to this. Have you ever been working hard to keep an emotion you know, beneath the surface, but the moment somebody reaches out and strokes you or holds you, 
it just overwhelms you, that kindness, that, that love, it, it just makes your emotions come forth. If a woman doesn't want to have that emotional experience, then she's not going to want to be touched. This one can take a lot of time and patience to undo. What she needs to do is gradually release her old defense mechanisms and all of her old boundaries so that she can feel more safe with you. What's important is that you don't rush her. Let her set the pace and be very, very gentle. But you also need to consider the third possibility. And it's not that she doesn't trust herself. And that's not the reason why she doesn't want to be touched. It's because she doesn't trust you. Right now, I want you to think of somebody who you absolutely loathe. Some horrible, odious character who lied to you or stole from you or just wronged you in the past. You know, think of that person, bring them to mind. And now imagine what it would feel like inside your body if that person was to hold you and to stroke you and to place their hands on your head. It's disgusting, isn't it? Remember that touch is really, really intimate. And so if a couple's relationship becomes too dysfunctional and the woman just outright resents the man, it makes sense that she's going to physically withdraw from him and refuse to be touched by him. It's really a primal protection mechanism that is kicking in. She views him as an unsafe person and her body responds. She recoils from his touch. She can't handle the emotional intimacy of being physically close with him. Maybe you can relate to this. Maybe if you dated a woman who was hugely toxic, she's always lying to you, always abusing you, she cheated on you or whatever. Do you wanna be physically close to her? Do you want that kind of vulnerability? No, you, you feel like you need to put some distance between you and her for the sake of your own safety. So take note, if your girlfriend will never cuddle with you and doesn't wanna to touch you, and she's always got an excuse, like, oh, she's just not in the mood at the moment or she's just busy right now. If that keeps going on, consider the possibility that she doesn't feel safe around you. She doesn't trust you and you need to work on that. Have a talk, find out what her issues are. Is there something that she needs to work on? Is there something that you need to work on? Can this be fixed or is too much damage being done? There's too much hurt, too much pain and you, you both need to split up and find different partners. I really see no virtue in staying in a relationship that's dysfunctional, you know? Just swallow your pride. Yes, the relationship failed, move on. I mean, at least have a chance with somebody else that's got to be better than living in a relationship where you ne you're never touching each other. You don't need to be ashamed about having a desire for touch. Intimacy, emotional intimacy has a physical expression that's only natural. And this isn't just about meeting her needs, it's about meeting your needs as well. Please don't try and convince me that because you're some tough masculine man, you don't have a desire to be touched or the only kind of you know, touch that you're interested in is when a woman's touching your junk. Stop it. I don't believe you. Drop all the macho bullshit. Yes, you're a man, but you're also a human and you are biologically wired to respond to touch. There's no shame in that. If you're really struggling with this, you can reach out to me on Hey Hero. Tell me your story. Tell me your problems. Ask for advice and I'll send you a personalized video in response. So in conclusion, I would encourage everybody listening to this to examine their own relationship and their own comfort level with touch, both touching women and being touched, and then try and move to a greater level of acceptance, you know, integrate it to be a normal part of your human experience. A man who is fully comfortable and confident touching women and being touched is going to be attractive to women. Women are going to be drawn to his confidence and the feeling of safety that they get in his presence. It's really, really essential, not just for making women attracted to you, but also just for your mental health. Here's a difficult question. How do you criticize your girlfriend's appearance, like the way she dresses or how much makeup she wears or the fact that she's gained some extra weight? How do you bring that up without hurting her feelings? Is that actually possible or is this too difficult, not worth trying? I claim it's possible. I actually have a step-by-step -step guide that I think if you follow it, you're going to be successful. If you want access to that, please go and sign up on my Patreon. It's just a $5 a month subscription. You get access to that video plus a huge number of other videos. It's a wonderful way to support the creator. Uh, we have a fantastic community over there. So many videos, like 150 at this point. Be great to see you over there.